in the Zika outbreak, very different situation from Ebola, uh, a disease that had been uh, identified in 1947, handful of cases in Africa, a 50-year period with no cases at all, and then uh, um, the reemergence of the disease in uh, the Pacific Islands. CDC was involved in investigations. It seemed to be a pretty mild illness, actually. Most cases uh, didn't even cause symptoms. About 80% of people didn't even know they had the infection. Uh, the disease then was identified in Brazil in May of 2015. And what happened after that is really, was really unpredictable and unforeseeable. Uh, and that was a reports of very severe uh, birth defect in areas that the virus had been recognized as being transmitted. Uh, really a very unusual uh, type of microcephaly, small head, um, different from this kind of normal microcephaly. This is a very particular type of microcephaly where the brain of these, uh, these babies is a actually uh, destroyed and the skull kind of collapses on itself. Um, and this is the most severe um, form of the birth defect associated with Zika. Uh, this is the first uh, mosquito-borne disease ever to, uh, to cause a birth defect. It's the first infectious disease to be recognized as causing a birth defect in 50 years. So the, the ability to foresee this and respond, have that, all the things in place needed to respond really w weren't in place. Some of the elements, though, of the global health security agenda would be relevant. The laboratory capability to detect the problem uh, would have been something that would be in place. The ability to rapidly respond and kind of nail down this association more quickly. Uh, the other parts of the response for Zika that are necessary, and I'd have to say this is uh, the most complicated response CDC has ever been involved in. There are more different disciplines within CDC that have to be brought to bear. Uh, we haven't a actually ever been involved in, a, in an emergency response that involved our birth defect center. Um, so we've got birth defects, we've got vector-borne disease, we've got the groups that develop laboratory diagnostic tests. We also uh, have had the group that works on sexual transmission because the virus can be transmitted through sexual transmission. So this is bringing a lot of parts of CEC together uh, and really is something that's needed to have all of the aspects of expertise uh, available to be able to respond.